them two penciled holes beneath paper before you begin how long before you will see them projected onto a screen is not yet known now only know the distance between the heel and toe becomes apparent you feel the uneasiness of gravel shift beneath your instep want to know where the rain on your face first started they say the north is made of stronger stuff than this but you don't know what that means Picking up speed by the park where they did you in for not looking girl enough Got you on your knees to see your own blood But now it's in your ears as you take what they call the long way around At first a child into open arms or playing the game and not wanting to be found You cross concrete, cobbles, tarmac, shame There is something in your vision, perhaps it is him who says see you later and then never again as a question comes but the crowd grows and you're already out on the top road the slam 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 of your football is a language you throw against the houses watching you in lines the lane you once called yours now reclaimed by different routines and the raw bite at the back of your throat when you try to breathe It's like the town is cut in two with a plastic knife from the fryer up with the shutters down most of the week and a colour code that comes without asking. In the back of your throat you can feel the acid like the holes bubbling under the flyover where your feet keep crossing. This is what it is to resist, this is what it is to be chased at first like it means something and then as just as much of a task as everything else and the thumping, thumping thumping of your heart at the bend in the road where you want to know want to know want to keep going past the ward where you watch the wall and the office where you lost your spark like the insignia of new decoration the football scarves were in windows as you take on the streets you wouldn't dare even at dusk the sky smells different round here You wish you had someone to run to Ask in, ask them Why it is you don't understand your body As you press it harder into the concrete
a lot of the poems that um, are, well, the poems that I write are very personal. Um, I write them out of feeling. I write them out of specific times and places in my life and places where I've grown up or that I've travelled through. And um, I often work with a character, or in the most recent poems, I work with a character um, called Rex, who is kind of the archetype of an illness that I have suffered with for, I want to say suffered with, that I've kind of been dealing with for quite a long time, um, you know, dealing with anorexia. And um, the character is called Rex, and this is the poem where he started to become more apparent. Um, this is called The Birth of Rex. The Birth of Rex. It was either death or delivery. That was a situation my mum faced with me as they wheeled her into theatre, assembled the screen, as if the prospect of her own body opened was fear. Then it happened to me. The due date was inevitable, the conception immaculate. Dictated by a skull on concrete and then in an ambulance, from station to ward, I watched the process. A nurse squeezed my hand. One, two, three. Slowly, delivery is both a positive and a negative word. It is arrival and loss simultaneously. I lost consciousness. The way a child loses confidence forever being pushed to the back of the line. Deliver, like the hooking out of that black organ. I thought that might be it, as they wheeled me through wards and the congregation of waiting nurses parted like waves. It was a miracle that I survived the first time. The second wasn't living, it was failure. Failure to carry to term, the gestation, the closeness of term and termination. They pulled out as proof and put on my chest, not a baby, but five cold suckers feeding a machine. The reading, 55 BPM, 55 BPM, 55 BPM. I had never been naked in front of my father since we were children. Now he stood screaming at the foot of the bed. Bits of the body that are not meant to smile, smile when they are put under pressure. Take a rib and curve it to blame like Adam did. That's what I tell the man with the black book who stands there wanting my words. Everyone has a limited time on earth, he says, as I turn to him and suddenly see the start of a fissure opening, revealing a head. One hot rush is all it takes as he slithers forward. The name Rex, I spit beside myself. He comes out screaming like confession, the type my mother takes and turns to story. She will later tell me I was blessed. I will never tell her I was hungry. There's a fire in the smashed stopwatch of my heart, seething effortlessly against the ringing. I drip light as they wheel me away. The nurse smiles as she says, this is just the beginning. Thank you very much. I was going to give you a choice now. Do you want a poem about trainers or a poem about being implicated in a murder? <laughs> What type of trainers? Um, murder trainers! Murder trainers! <laughs> but you can have murder and then you can have trainers. I think that's a crowd pleaser. Right, this is Instruments in an Unnamed Case, and this is about being implicated, all the people that could possibly be implicated in the murder that were never quite aware of it, and it's inspired by um, Simon Armitage. Um, this is Instruments in an Unnamed Case. The taxi driver who took them to somewhere quiet. The woman who scanned the box of lighters. The boy who delivered the metal cable on his first job covering Royal Mail. The homeware assistant who, with much thought, recommended the knives in the yellow block. The motorist who let others kindly in front. The trader of balaclavas, scarves and gloves. 
the laundrette offering full stain removal, the bouncer who retained the rate of refusal, the antique dealer who took a chance in trading the tossing fork in brass, the stationer selling cheap duct tape, the gardener ready to part with his spade. You turn up and you're still alive, <coughs> as guiltily innocent as him, her, or I. <laughs> Could have been part of a murder that you never realised. The butler did it. <laughs> Perhaps. And then you can have one about trainers and you can envisage whatever pair of trainers you want. <coughs> this actually comes out of quite a difficult um, time um, for me. I used to I used to live in Scotland and I used to run along the east coast of um, I used to live in Fife and um, run along the coastline and it became kind of an addictive kind of behaviour. It was the only form of escapism that I felt like I truly had. Um, and this is about, I thought rather than write about me, let's write about the footwear and the story of that. So this is about that. Um, trainers. The trainers taught my feet to run, to take the body and to push the plastic sole into the road, the same that I was brought upon. I learned the rate at which the body burns, fuel to fire and fire to ash, an equation the muscles would embrace, the trainers did not need to ask. The shoulders folded to a rail, where the spine hung its dress of bone, and skin became the rippled wave, the trainers still would tighten on. Like the toys a child displays, the trainers took imagined life. When legs became a pencil shape, those little googly stick-out eyes flashed just as the headlights say of cars passing in the night. Thank you for your cause to wait. The trainers paused, foot tissue tried to break through tongs, one tied with lace. Then fabric as wire fell to slip. I glued those telltale mouths clean shut. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The time it takes to count to ten is the time it takes to draw the blood. The test beyond the classroom now, the ones which see the trainers touch to become the third eyes in a room when instructed then to take them off while skin submitted to a teacher's hand the trainers fell and fixed and watched. I learned the rate at which the body burns and how a heel can curl back crushed. The trainers cast as if to watch the show of human hunger, human lust. The trainers taught my feet to run. The trainers turned to hit the street. The trainers keep me running now. The trainers hold the blood and meat, which still flees beyond the arms, like the memorial of a trainer box. Marks a steady life I could have led. The trainers frame which cannot stop. The trainers fall into the roots of people who would go on to hurt. Every day, your trainers pass through layers of human blood and dirt, of which so much goes unasked. Like the questions I've learned to swallow down when I see he who wants my skin for game, the trainers say, you can walk beyond this now. Thank you. Who wants a poem about the World Cup? I didn't want to write it, but <laughs> it came. <laughs> It came out of the phrase that was banded around far too much, um, which was, it's coming home, which became like completely vacuous. Um, but um, sure, I, I, I made the terrible decision just after a World Cup match, I think it was when England got into some kind of significant stage of playing, to, um, to decide to get on the tr a bus to Burnley. And um, just after the match, everyone poured out of the pubs onto this bus, and I was upstairs listening to listening to a group of lads um, who were really, really drunk, um, just leer at everybody. And it was, it wasn't, it was quite intimidating, but I decided to write about it instead. 
So I was there scribbling away at what they probably thought was being very strange. Um, it's called It's Coming Home. It's coming home in a packed bus, lodged in a vein of the M62, a throng of fans with their shirts stretched, the broken scars red, white and blue, smeared into the sweat of arms, spat phrases come in borrowed bursts, picking over the body three seats back with who would do what to her. It's coming home, an outside scream they can't ignore, answer, bashing windows with well-worked fists, the tennis, the sound of tennis ball futility against the floor. In ritual humiliations, PE lessons, more than one remembers borrowed kits, performance pressure to make a man, the strange urine-like instinctive hiss. It's coming home anxious in the gut, the one hot jolt as windows slam, and one shoots up, still in his shirt, and cries out, who the fuck was that? The words of poultice on his gums, burning at the remembered heat. Fifteen years old in the changing step sheds, the knife glint of aerosol tins, his stepfather's approaching wheeze. It's coming home, ready to fight. The group pull him like a guy rope back to sit. Overheard phrases, open mouths. As a liquid lunge, it starts to rinse. He cannot think about the man who lifts his shirt with the momentary means to avoid the smashed constellation of his spine. Two coin-like growths he has never seen. It's coming home in angry bodies, muscle memory of mockery, emerges in stop staring or I'll stop your face, each a caught clock flexing backwards, grasping remembered energy. Still in his shirt, the rest undressed, the man feels the liquid line beneath, his ribs that time has taught him to reject when no one then came back to him. It's coming home within a fist, the one he takes at night and holds between the armpit and the ribs, like something smaller than it is, like something to be soothed, he shifts the angles of his face, he sings. It's coming home, it's coming home, the opposite of where he knows to be. Thank you. <laughs> Does anybody have any idea of how long I've got? It's not an existential question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're going to lynch me, you might as well lynch me now. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Mm, that's nice. Fifty years. Fifty years. Thank you. That's very kind. Pretty generous. Who wants a poem about butchers? Because yes, as a vegetarian, I'm. Um, yeah, I. Now don't eat animals or animal products, but I used to work in a butcher's and that might, um, and I gathered a lot of, a lot from that in a sense, um, but also it connected with lots of other aspects of, in my life, so I decided to write about that. And this is a new one, it's never been read um, to an audience before, so you're either lucky or not so lucky. Um, this is butcher's. The half of a cow in the back of the van did not react as my blue fingers sunk to an angle of bone only exposed by a blade. Bake up market, Christmas three weeks away, and the absurd beauty striking me numb. Still does, these hands that at fifteen had touched more dead than living flesh, holding a shredded series of animals myself back each breath a kind of resignation to self-corruption thigh breast leg became almost fabric <coughs> half frozen as men selected the furthest away and i in that human arc leaned over neck out like inviting the blade learning then the time flesh becomes meat the word tenderness which translates as the ability to please the combination of teeth, tongue and knife. I come from a line of shoe workers and thieves and men who beat their wives. I thought, dousing the floor of the van with bleach, 
This is what my great-great-grandmother drank. The utter intimacy of a mouthful burnt clean. That last blow was her own, thumped as a carcass. The cow that still bubbles at the edge of my mind. How the pink of blood and sawdust darkens. To the colour rising high in the cheeks of my parents, emitting <laughs> adultery in the bed of my childhood. I was 13, sex and death gaining a sluggish cow heaviness, the muscle memory of the sheet and her legs. If only your mother could see the repeated cuts in young self-belief, the teenage job in the market my grandmother approved as proper. Now crouched in a sodden nightgown, she talks to inanimate objects. I pick her up like something slaughtered. She has already forgotten herself, and I am aware of my butcher's fingers leading her back to the residence lounge. Her nails are the colour of gammon, piercing points in my hand. Perhaps they can still smell it on me, the men that come to the stall of my own making. The body is a piece of paper, unknown by the movements pressed upon it, like a receipt, the ones I would hand over in a written sum for each portion of flesh, the signature of something breaking over and over, the routine of transaction ingrained like the taste of metallic sauce on cotton wool bread, picture the bacon sandwiches made by the master butcher, the meat I would kick under the shelving during the routine break, tasting the familiar shame of white spattered by red, the stain still clots on my tongue in its crust of cold as I reach outwards beyond myself. I crave to cut these butcher's hands. I want you to know that one day this touch will be felt. Thank you. Right, I think I've just got two more um, for you. Um, this is a poem that I have not read to anybody before, um, not even previewed it by anybody. And there is a certain person in this audience tonight that will know um, who and what it's about and it means a great de deal to me um, and this is called Defiant and this is also it's Defiant after Simon Armitage and it's inspired by the first line of a Simon Armitage poem and a particular journey um, so yeah this is Defiant Defiant whatever possessed us to make for the singing ringing tree lurking like a burnt out spire over Burnley, selling the stories of flame. We joined the congregation of motorway seepage from Manchester, I in a childhood dress, and you in the same hooded jacket you'd worn for your turn at the clinic. We were both in it, two adults badly prepared for the elements, behind the wheel of a Fiat Panda with its blue paintwork and yellow seats the quaking cowbell noise on each corner. You had moved over from Leeds, and I returning as local, though the world rattled round in my throat, through rotten stall, crochet of love cloth, our eyes darting from windscreen, each other the road. We were going against doctor's orders, our smiles thin and bracing against each blast of air, as you kept your windows open. The music was MP3, the weather cloudy to bear. The songs were already chosen, we knew each other too well. The problem of bone rubbing skin, knocking seat, as the mortar fuzzed and floundered to the summit of Crown Point Hill. Pendle burst up like a sudden statement, fields and houses in its trailing patchwork quilt, smudgy brown and yellow, green, your favourite, I remarked, your blue grip on the wheel relaxing as we rumble to halt in a verge, a passing place on a minor road in Lancashire. You turned, hand defiant in the quick cut of the engine, the sound of shared and shaken breath. 
We knocked it back with cider, still warm sour from the can, acidity light lighting the touch paper of taste buds, unlocking the souls, the doors, each tread with the more sucking, fuse the whole world in flavour. The wind awaits from all directions, caring not for angles or sizes. The mutual bandage of our hands running up to the tree, two stick people framed on an open horizon. <laughs> that poem was for Charlotte. And this final one is, um, it was kind of inspired by um, somebody commenting that I still have all my poems scattered around me, on, still thrown around me on stage. Um, I've, I've never been that um, well equipped at memorising my poems for, for whatever reason, but I just kind of, you have to go with what feels right to you and what feels instinctive to you. And um, that's what I've always done, and that's what I'd like, encourage anybody else to do. You know, there's no definitive way of um, performing or being creative or being expressive. So I'm going to continue to just have like random bits of paper all around me, but you know, I think that's. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> or you can you can come and you can come and grab some. You know, I think it's you know it's it's important to do things that work for you as a creative person and to feel that you can really own that. And um, this last one's called By Heart because it was kind of inspired by the phrase you can't learn it by heart, but also it's about this kind of instinctive sense of love and community and. Um, the ongoing nature of that for me, you know, despite all the trials and tribulations we go through, it can be really part of something meaningful. So yeah, thank you for having me. Um, <laughs> this is by heart. The age we first know it is unknown. That sense of sound stirring beneath your skin, the lie of its symbol on a white page and the fat wax crayons to fill it in. Who coloured it pink? Who put their hand against their neck and felt the tick of an insect trapped as if beneath a sheet, felt appalled when they first saw it on screen? Some surgical clip or reconstruction, that ripped red glut of throb and wet. Until then, you'd been told to put it in all you did at 11. You've considered the meat inside yourself. Quiver, then fizz, like a pill hits liquid as you suppress the ache of increasing nights. The heart becomes a pacemaker of other people attempting to fall into someone else's time. Some call it love and others failure as the beat weights your mouth in its caustic sponge. Those adolescent flavours of hope and doubt spatter the back of a throat in a liquid lunge. At 18, you sped it up with powder as a domestic machine in its fastest cycle wields a whir behind eyes, bores into the head like the slug of a shot from an on-screen rifle. To say it breaks is an odd way to touch at a throbbing socket with its sandpapered surface which it falls back into time again, resuming the pace of usual service. It surprises us, like both a toy and an explosive, a wound to move with the same motion. We learn tension as a practised art, given in answer form as coping. Yet still it stirs and seethes and rattles as we crave to feel others to give ours up, and sometimes passion pours, but the beat drops, like a sandbag slaps stonework against the flood. The times you try to forget where you press, place that symbol, first coloured at five and fixed on another. The one to take the heart like a coin and slot it clean into the slot of a smile to make it open. Still you feel it's bare as you curl on your side at night muscle memory of within the mother, the beat you have always been able to hear. Peace falls, not with a full stop, but a comma. <laughs>